Bro Cam here and welcome to Amateur Hour. Today I'm going to show you how to print your own key, make your own keystones for my 3D printed window pass through system. Uh, it's a modular antenna, uh, antenna feed line pass through system uh, that doesn't use connectors to impart DV loss. It's modular so you can keep adding on how many ever connectors you want and it's 3D printed. So I don't know what that means, but I have a lot of filament and that makes it cheap for me. So let's see how we do it. All right, so just for reference, this is kind of what I created here. You can see that there's a section here and a section here. And the reason this is orange is because I ran out of blue printing these last two ones, but Basically, it's a uh, it's a clamshell design. Uh, these fit together, and you have these. Uh, if you look over here on the right. You can see where the coax is coming in. So I have these. Um, I'm calling them keystones, um, and they come apart like this. And I also that's a big hole, but I made this in case I had this open here, so you can kind of see there's a one here I just have covered with duct tape. I plan on putting another piece of coax in, which is another reason I made this is so it would be modular. Uh, so you can fit six of these side by side in one of these bricks. And um, there's a, a blank one that I'm going to show you how to modify in Tinkercad to fit your own cable. Is uh, what I do is, and I'm still working on this design. I think I'm going to update this, but this is a a bushing. So once this is in there. And you have your cable running through the window. You can slip this up in there, slip it up in there, just like I have on that cable on the right there to uh, basically remove all the room around it. So nothing gets in or out. Uh, so yeah, you can see here, this is the duct tape I've got covered over the one. So you can see with these middle sections here, what I've done is I've just taken the blank and I've expanded in the X direction to 180 uh, millimeters that is what is the inside track here is it will run you can do that to fill out whatever space you need uh, after installing all your keystone and then here's just a close-up of it so you can see the two halves here top and bottom and uh where the coax is going in now i i, I do want to uh refine uh my bushing i'm calling this the cable bushing um so that it, it sits together a little better I didn't want to do a full knob like this because I felt like that would be hard to maneuver and get the cable in in this tight space. Um, so I think I'm going to work on experiment with making some detents that will like kind of like, so when you put this in, it kind of like clicks in. Because as of now, it's just kind of sitting in there. And I plan on putting just a little drop of CA at the on either side just to kind of keep it in place, you know, just tight enough to keep it from moving. And then when I need to move it, I can just shift it and it'll, it should break the glue. So here we can see, these are my individual pieces that I have modeled. So I have how this works is that each of these are basically, uh, not, would it be a mirror image? I'm not sure what the proper word is, but basically, uh, if you do two of them, so if I clone this one and then I could flip this over, uh, 180 degrees and uh, if you look from the side here these will uh, slot together so uh, it's not gonna let me do it here yeah so they slot together kind of like that uh, and it's the same with uh, it's the same with all of these these two objects and this object uh, and this is just the blank filler this is just the full height and this is what i'm going to show you how to modify so let's jump over to tinkercad and i'm going to show you how to modify this so here in tinkercad we have our blank filler block and uh, I, i'm going to try to do this as concise as possible i'm not going to walk you through exactly how to use tinkercad all i'm going to say is that i'm heavily using uh this up here is this, there's a group tool and then there's an align tool. So um, I'll do it 
I'll explain what I'm doing the first couple times, but then I'm just gonna start going with it. So uh, we're gonna duplicate this. And uh, we're going to, if I hit L, I select Control A to select all of them. I hit L to uh, open the Align tool. I'm gonna align these front and back so that they're perfectly aligned. I'm gonna deselect them. I'm gonna click on this one. Just one of them, it doesn't matter which one. And we're gonna go up 20, because that is half the height of these. Look at the height of this, it's 40. So if you go up 20, that is half the height. We're going to select our one that's in the air. And we're gonna come over here and hit hole. What this will do when you group these is that it will take whatever's in the hole and subtract it. So for example, it cuts it in half. So now we have that. Uh, we don't want to add these together yet because we still want to find the center of this block. And if we do that, the center we're going to be finding is down here. So we want the whole center. Let's bring out a whole cylinder. There's a rotate tool here. If you click, you can, in these big block areas, you can get it to 90 degrees. That's what I want. Um, what I want to do is set the size of this. So to make it a, a bit longer than this block. And let's figure out how big, uh, this is the whole size I was going with is the size of my coax uh, or about the end of my coax. So I have some Maxwell 150 millimeter digital calipers. They are okay. They're uh, relatively inexpensive. It does uh, metric and it does imperial. Uh, my only complaint is that you must take the battery out because if you leave the battery in, inevitably it will turn on and it, the battery will kill itself. So here these are, it's got a nice big display. So I'm just going to take my coax end and we're just going to find out roughly how big this is. And it's, I'm coming at 20.09 millimeters. So I'm going to add one to that. I'm just going to make it 21. I would rather be too big than too small. So we'll click on this, set this width to 21. And this, since on its side is the other half of the circle. So it's uh, also 21. So that should now be the correct size. So let's go ahead and we're going to select and if we hold shift and select an object, it will select both of those objects. So we can open our align tool and we can align these to the center. I have to, uh, align this as well, but we can realign this in a second. I'm going to copy this and, uh, just put it over here because this is going to be the size of our bushing that we're going to create. So we'll just leave that there. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll group these together. Oh, see, I didn't, I missed an align somewhere. So let's ungroup. If I click this and this. I hit L so I can align like that. And now I can see that, uh, let's move that. That's going all the way through. So click, shift click, group. And uh, that cuts that out. And I'm seeing here that you see how big these straight edges are here. I don't want that. Ungroup that. We're going to select. We're going to make these sides and segments as big as possible. You don't want to do the bevel. The bevel will make it a ball. Leave the bevel where it's at. So now we'll do that and that. And now if we group, you can see that there's still straight edges, but they're much smaller. So I'm going to. Or if I forget, I'm going to do it on this one too. Jack the sides and the segments up. So, all right, now uh, I want to do kind of a, uh, a, a lip, like a slot, like I did with these. See, there's a slot here, and there's a raised part here, and they slot together. Um, that makes it really nice and easy to, when you got them sandwiched, that they won't apart let's add those so we're going to put a, a square down and then i'm going to align it to the left 
And then I'm going to make this square just barely to fit the width of uh, this section that's going to be cut off. Let's get another square. And this is going to be my uh, little peg. So I'm going to make this, where's my size at? This is two, let's do one. I think it's one. And then height wise, let's do five. And then we're going to take this and this, and we're going to align them to the center and to the left and to the middle. And so now that puts my peg section over here directly to the left. And what I want to do is I actually want to light it, align it to the middle of this. That's going to put it somewhere over here. So we're going to select that shift select and do that. And now what we can do is take this, duplicate it, this, align it to the left, I'm going to align this to the left. And we're going to take this and this, and we're going to align here. And this is now done. So I just put that over there in case I need to align again, but uh, we're gonna make one of these a hole. And so now uh, if I select all three of those and hit group, oh, hold on order of operations here ungroup that I need to put this I need to cut this section out first because if you saw what happened there was when I did when I grouped this this peg just disappeared that geometry is gone because it was adding it to stuff that already existed so what we're going to do is align there and align there and now we can hit group control G sorry so there we go now I have our two pegs here and um, I'm actually going to increase this size or I'm sorry I'm going to decrease this size by a small tolerance and increase this size by a small tolerance. So I'm actually, I am gonna to have to realign this again. So what we're gonna do is we're going to increase this by 0.1. No, I'm sorry, we're gonna decrease this size by 0.1. So it's gonna be 0 0.9. And then we're going to increase this size by 0.1. And what that is going to do is make it a lot easier to slot these together. So that and that, uh, L middle, okay, that and that, L to the right, that and that, L middle, and that should be good. So now we just select all these, we hit group, and there we go. One half of our keystone. So uh, all you do is you print two of these. Um, you take one, flip it 180 degrees after you're done printing it. And you just go, whoop, and that's how you, that's how they fit together. So now I have that, let's make the bushing. Uh, the bushing I would say is easier to make. Um, especially since the current model I have doesn't have any detents or anything. So what we're going to do is make this solid and we're going to, uh, well, let's put this on the ground and then, uh, I have a little lip on mine. If you look right here, there's a little lip. And the reason that is, is so that when I put this in here, it doesn't fall through. I'm taking this, uh, this is called a tube shape. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, align this 
And then uh, the size is, since I know that this is 21, I'm gonna make this 22. Uh, and um, I'm also going to take this height, which would be this one, 10. And I think I did, I think I did a one. Yeah, it's pretty thin. So now if I click those and I can just do that and they're in the same plane. And, um, oh, uh, this length is too long. My keystone is 20 millimeters deep. So let's just make this 20 millimeters. So select both of those, group them. We have our nice, um, like a spool of thread. Half, half a spool of thread kind of look going. So now we got to get our cable. We got a big thing of coax over there, but I don't feel like dragging it out. So we're going to test with this three and a half millimeter TRS cable. And it's just like getting the outside of the jacket. So we're just going to turn this on. And the size I'm getting is uh, 2.83, 2.84. Uh, I'm going to increase that to, let's do 3.3 to uh for this to sit in so i should give make it a little easier to i'm not squishing the cable or anything so we'll grab our hole our whole cylinder got to rotate this one 90 degrees and what we're going to do is we're just going to set the dimensions to uh three point three and height in this case 3.3 and then length we want it at more than 20 so let's just say 25 and now what we can do is select this and this align middle line middle 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 so we have our hole sticking out of both sides so we can just hit control g the group uh, and there is that. So you can see where this is going. Let's go ahead and get another hole brick. And what we want here is we just want it to encapsulate this. So uh, the dimensions don't ma matter too much. You just want it to be bigger than this. Uh, select both of those and align to the middle. Um, actually I want, this needs to be taller. Okay. So what you want to do with this is L we're going to align middle and it's encapsulated. So we know that the height of this spool is 22. So what we're going to do is We're going to select the whole box and we're going to come up 11. Oh, hold on. We are off the ground here. This, for this to work, the, this needs to be touching the ground. So right there, it says zero. All right. L this. Keep missing this. And this, okay, all lined up. So click this arrow to go up 11. And now that looks pretty darn centered. So select that and group, and there we go. We have our bushing. And so hopefully that helped you. Uh, I just, I didn't want to put holes in my wall or in my ceiling or in my foundation or, and I needed a way to get the cable in. And uh, I didn't want to add connector because I know that that can impart some, some loss there. So I really just wanted to do a straight cable through. And I've been doing that for a while, um, except I just had tape over the windowsill with the gap was. And I also noticed that the windowsill was kind of uh, dropping onto the cable and I was kind of pinching it. So I was just trying to come up with a solution that would let me keep a single cable and keep the, um, 
window pretty well separated from the outside world and uh, you know, protect the cable and allow me the modularity to add more cables because I am going to be adding more cables as I'm adding more antennas and doing more tests. So uh, modularity was a must for me. So I think this will, solution will work okay. So hopefully you learned something here and remember why build it when you can buy it. In this case, 3D design it and print it. Thank you, 73.